begin our service with Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, now and forever. Amen. And together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> and now the children may follow Miss Liz for Children's Chapel. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land and a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites,
the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. We will say today's psalm responsively by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. Whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, <clears throat> serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not become, become overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. And in giving of ourselves. 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God, forbid it. Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord, open our eyes to see you, our ears to hear you, and our hearts to receive you. Amen. Amen. Poor Peter. Last week, G Jesus had commended him for recognizing that Jesus was the Messiah. And Jesus had told Peter, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but, to, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Now, when Jesus explains that he will be arrested, killed, and then rise on the third day, Peter takes Jesus aside to tell him, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. And Jesus' reaction is to tell Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Peter, the rock, which in Greek can also be interpreted, according to my New Testament professor, as the pebble that irritates, is now the stumbling block on Jesus' path. Maybe Peter expected Jesus to be the Jewish Messiah who would raise up an army and overthrow the Roman government. So of course he couldn't be arrested and killed. Or perhaps Peter perceived Jesus as his rabbi who would be renowned throughout all of Israel for his teachings and healings. But again, he couldn't be arrested and killed. Where would that leave Peter and the others who are following Jesus? Perhaps it is out of concern for Jesus' well-being that Peter confronts him. But to Jesus, Peter is being a stumbling block who is tempting him to look to worldly power and his own well-being rather than following the path that he must travel, ending in his arrest, suffering, death, and then rising to new life on the third day. The path that will bring in the kingdom of God to this world. The path that will lead to new life for all who follow Jesus, the Christ. 
Jesus is following the path that overcomes the violence and evil of this world. But Peter is setting his mind not on divine things, but on human things. Peter doesn't know the end of the story. He only knows the Jesus who is standing there right in front of him. The Jesus who teaches and heals people. The Jesus who confronts the religious authorities of his day. The Jesus who confronts the injustices he encounters in his society. Jesus is showing Peter and the others how to confront the powers of this world. But Peter wants Jesus to be the Jewish Messiah. Peter still doesn't understand and will have to grow in his faith, just as we have to grow in ours. Jesus tells Peter to get behind me, Satan. Jesus, in his humanity, is tempted to follow the expectations of those around him. Earlier in Matthew's Gospel, Satan had tempted Jesus to use his power to feed himself, to turn the stones into bread. He was offered all the kingdoms of the world. But Jesus replied, away with you, Satan. Jesus commanded Satan to depart from him. Here, Jesus tells Peter to get behind me. A disciple is to follow behind their teacher, their rabbi. Jesus doesn't send Peter away. He tells him there is more that he needs to know. Get behind me, follow me. Don't be the stumbling block to temptations of power. Peter, out of his own needs, tempts Jesus to change course, to seek earthly power, and Jesus will have none of it. Get behind me and learn from me as you follow me into death, a new life, Jesus tells Peter. The way of Jesus that contradicts society's ways of power and violence. We see society's way of power and violence all around us every day. This country suffers from a plague of gun violence, racism, corporate greed, and lack of adequate health care for all. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we are called to work for reconciliation among all people and to respect the dignity of every human being. We are called to work to end systemic racism in our country, to see that everyone has access to health care and mental health resources. In following Jesus Christ, we are called to bring healing to the world, to proclaim God's love to our neighbors in whatever form that may take. The very next thing that Jesus t does is to tell his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. After telling Peter to get behind him, Jesus then tells all his disciples that they must take up their cross and follow him. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to confront our own ego's desires and listen to what God is calling us to do with our lives. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, gives us a blueprint for how to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Paul writes, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Love your neighbor as Jesus loves us. Work to overcome evil in our midst and respect each other. As the church, we are to show this to each other as well, to lift up each other and support each other in our daily lives. It's all about relationships. Paul tells us in the church in Rome to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, and extend hospitality to strangers. These are all ways to follow Jesus. As we mourn with those who have lost loved ones to illness, gun violence, and racism, we are bearing our cross. As we persevere in prayer individually and corporately, we are bearing our cross. As we care for those around us and help to provide food and resources for our neighbors through our connection with BIM, we are bearing our cross. Actually, the results of the Holy Cow survey show that this church does practice radical hospitality. 
We do extend hospitality to those who walk through our doors. And as we say in our core values, we want to welcome everyone, those who are celebrating and full of gladness, and those who are hurting and given to despair. We are not blessed only for ourselves, but that others may be blessed through us. God commissions us from this community to seek out others in relationship. The word commission indicates that we are not sent out alone. We do the work together in partnership with God and each other. Our core values tell us that as we discern how God is calling us to use our talents and reach out to others, we are bearing our cross. Picking up our cross may mean to get behind Jesus and learn from him as we follow Jesus into the death of our own desires, desires for control and security in our daily lives, and into a new way of life that we haven't even imagined. Jesus calls us to confront our own ego's desires and listen to what God is calling us to do with our lives as individuals and as his church. It is important that we follow our church's core values as we seek a new rector for grace, to live into our core value that states, as a vital church, we constantly grow, changing and adapting. We do not want to be stuck in older established ways of being, knowing or doing that keeps us from moving forward toward and into God's future. We value creativity, and we desire to embrace imagination, vision, and risk-taking together. That is taking up your cross and following Jesus, following where Jesus leads us. And by, way, by the way, according to the Holy Cow survey, that is exactly what grace is doing. Being a vital church that is willing to risk for the sake of God's kingdom here and now, so thank you. As we enter into the fall season, we will see what God has in mind for our church. We will see how we can encourage each other, how we can build Christ's church and not be a stumbling block on Christ's path for us. As we persevere in prayer, offer radical hospitality, and we serve the Lord together, amen. Now let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be unified in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, have mercy. Direct and guide this faith community. As we seek a rector who will minister to us to share your inclusive love with our neighbors, Lord, have mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the peace of the land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earthly as your own creation, that we may use these resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all lives closely. Link with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those in our prayers this morning. Bishop Michael Curry, as he awaits surgery, Jean, Aiden, Dorothy, Fred, Chuck, Marion, Delphine, Nancy, Lola, Mary Lou, Philip, Saul, Cheryl, Juan, Shannon, Olivia, Georgia, the Spadone family, Kate, Cecilia, Chris, Stephanie, David. Are there others? Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that for your will they may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers. Accept the fervent prayers of your people. May the most clear of your mercy work with compassion upon our hearts and all who turn to you for help. We are grateful, love of our souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Peace, Valerie. Peace. 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 Peace, you. Peace. Peace. Peace, the Lord. Peace. Peace. Peace, Dorothy. Peace, Chantel. Peace, 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 Lord. Peace. Peace, the Lord. Peace, God. Peace. Peace, the Lord. Peace. Peace back there. Peace back there. <laughs> peace, everyone. Peace over there. I forgot to say peace. <laughs> so we have birthdays and anniversaries. Come on up. Birthday and anniversaries. We'll pray. Next, uh, Lee, I'm going to ask you to come because our, my anniversary is this week. So <laughs> I'm going to join the birthdays and anniversaries. I'll just take yeah, it. Okay. Since my husband and I have our 49th anniversary on this Thursday. <laughs> September 1st. Oh, okay. Wow. That was just, yes, yeah, That's like Friday. 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 Yeah. And I'm celebrating my eighth anniversary of successful organ transplant. Oh. All right, congratulations. Eighth anniversary of successful organ transplants. Yay. <laughs> That's great. Let us pray. Oh, God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. Thank So next week is our ministry fair. So after the service, plan on staying because we will have tables for all the various ministries for grace in the parish hall. So you'll have a chance to get refreshments and just wander around and see all, all the ministries that we do here, which is a lot. So plan on staying next Sunday. Um, confirmation classes will start September 17th. So sign up if you're interested in being confirmed, received, or baptized, because there's a little QR code in the bulletin, so you can use that or go on the website. Um, we need volunteers for Pumpkin Patch, which is coming up in October. Right now, it looks like around October 14th is when the pumpkins will arrive. So please look ahead on your calendar and pick a date that you'd like to come and help. It'll be over a two-week period through Halloween. Um, and this is really exciting. The, Holy, the vestry had a chance to go over the Holy Cow results last uh, Thursday night this week. And Colin's, uh, Colin and Brady are on vacation right now. Otherwise, I'd have him telling you this. So he will be telling you this when he gets back. Uh, so Colin will let everyone, as your senior warden, he's going to let everyone know the results. But I want the thing that really struck me was the results show that this is a vibrant and energetic church that actually does practice radical hospitality to their neighbors. So congratulations, Grace. <laughs> it was amazing because I've done this with multiple churches with this Holy Cow survey, and Grace had results that were over, way over what I've ever seen before. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being true followers of Jesus Christ because we so need it in our world today. And for this place to be a place of radical hospitality where people can come in and be, feel safe and be welcomed is such a needed space in our country right now. 
So thank you, everyone, for what you're doing to truly follow Jesus Christ in your lives. So thank you. And I just can't, I, we were, I was so overcome by looking at the results on Thursday night. It was like, this is amazing. You truly walk the walk. You just don't talk it. So thank you. That's all I have. Does anybody, <laughs> Leah, do you have something else? OK. <laughs> so thank you, Grace. And now ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, come into his courts.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, your gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
please stand. And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. God.